Well, good morning, friends, and what a joy it is to be able to gather in worship and to rejoice in the goodness and greatness of God, isn't it? You know, the Psalms draw our hearts to God in so many different ways. And so as we gather for worship today, we're going to begin with these words from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. So let's begin our worship to God by, of God today by celebrating his goodness as together we lift up our voices in praise. Will you join me now in prayer? Let's pray together. Lord God, our loving Heavenly Father, as we gather in worship today, we want to lift up your name with our voices and bless your name in our praise as we rejoice in your innate goodness, eternal mercy and enduring truth. Lord, as we spend this time in worship, we ask that you would quieten our hearts and you would help us to look to you. There are so many thoughts, cares and challenges that would draw our eyes away from you and on to other matters. But Lord, we pray that you would focus our minds on you, that you would enable us to bring all that we are to worship you today. Remind us that we are never alone, 
and that you know us better and more deeply and more intimately than anyone else, even ourselves. And help us to trust that you hold us in the hollow of your unfailing and unfaltering love. As we come to you, we also take a moment to confess our sins before you. You call us to faith and to following Jesus by walking in your way. And yet, our Father, we are conscious of our many weaknesses and of the pull of the world upon us. And yet, you are able to change lives and to make everything new. And so we ask you to take our brokenness, our mistakes, our disappointments, and through your grace, shape something beautiful. And may our lives declare in a myriad of ways the renewing power and presence of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sin I condemned unclean how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous Say
Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by God's will, and from our brother Timothy. To the Church of God in Corinth, and to all God's people throughout Achaia, may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Paul gives thanks to God. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the merciful Father, the God from whom all help comes. He helps us in all our troubles, so that we are able to help others who have all kinds of troubles, using the same help that we ourselves have received from God. Just as we have a share in Christ's many sufferings, so also through Christ we share in God's great help. If we suffer, it is for your help and salvation. If we are helped, then you too are helped and given the strength to endure with patience the same sufferings that we also endure. So our hope in you is never shaken. We know that just as you share in our sufferings, you also share in the help we receive. We want to remind you, brothers, of the trouble we had in the province of Asia. The burdens laid upon us were so great and so heavy that we gave up all hope of staying alive. We felt that the death sentence had been passed on us, but this happened so that we should rely not on ourselves, but only on God, who raises the dead. From such terrible dangers of death, he saved us and will save us, and we have placed our hope in him that he will save us again, as you help us by means of your prayers for us. So it will be that the many prayers for us will be answered, and God will bless us, and many will raise their voices to him in thanksgiving for us. Let us join together now in our prayers for others. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you are the one God, the Father of us all. Help us to be still and know that you are our God, listening to your prayers that we bring before you now. For people and situations we don't know too much about, but also those people and situations we wish to remember that are sitting in our minds during this time of reflection. We pray for the war-torn areas of the world, Gaza, Lebanon and Ukraine. Touch each side in these conflict regions with your wisdom to drive dialogue with each other and strive for peace that the many innocent families would see an end to the death and destruction and be able to have some optimism for a normal, peaceful life. You pray for all those that can't be with us this morning, those who are listening to this service broadcast today on our social media channel some due to illness, others separated by vast distance. Whatever the reason, we ask that your message today will encourage them and draw them closer to you, giving them a sense of belonging, and we pray that their faith will be renewed and their spirits lifted in the knowledge that they share this time of worship as part of a large virtual congregation, united as one body through Christ. For those who are suffering from ill health, physical or mental, we pray for their comfort and healing and that they will be very aware that you have them in your hands, supporting them and providing the care they will need. Grant them your peace. We know life is busy with many demands. Bless us with your wisdom. Help us, Lord, not just to look, but also to see. Not just to hear, but to listen to all those folks and situations in our midst who could benefit from a bit of our time or support. In a moment of silence and aware of your presence, we take a few moments to reflect and to offer our personal prayers to you now. Lord of all creation, challenge us all in this world 
to make sacrifices and adjustments that will ensure security of the world for our children and the future generations to come. A precious gift from you, not to be taken for granted and squandered for selfish gain. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who have still to meet you and have that life-changing relationship that leads to eternal life in your house. Open their ears and hearts to your voice when you speak, that they might feel the peace and fulfilment in their lives that can only come through you. Constantly remind us, Lord, that time is free, but it is priceless. You can never own it, but you are free to use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it freely. But once you've spent it, you can't get it back. Lord, as we enter another week, make us mindful of time and help us to spend it and use it in your service. Each of us doing our part through the grace each of us has been given to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold my hope is only Jesus For my life is wholly bound to His Oh, how strange and divine I can sing all is mine Yet not I, but through Christ in me The night is dark but I am not forsaken For by my side The Savior, He will stay I labor on In weakness and rejoicing For in my need His power is displayed To this I hold My Shepherd will be
said not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Do you ever need help in your life? Have you ever longed for the embrace of comfort? Have you ever rejoiced in a simple phone call? Have you ever been lifted by receiving a bunch of flowers that were delivered to you? Can you remember a time when you had been on the receiving end of compassion and of help? It's one of those great juxtapositions of life that Jesus said that he came to bring us life and to bring us life in all its fullness. And yet Jesus also said that in this life we will have trouble. And we know the truth of that, don't we? We've all experienced it. We've all encountered difficult situations. We have journeyed through unpleasant experiences. We have faced challenging problems uh, and there's not one of us that is free of this. Trouble is universal. It affects everyone in some way or another. And it's why I think I find myself drawn to these words of Paul again today, which I find so honest and refreshing and challenging and yet so encouraging and grounding at the same time. Paul begins with a word of thankful praise, doesn't he? He says that we let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the merciful Father, the God from whom all help comes. Those are rich words. You know, Paul is so thankful for God's goodness in caring for him. Well, I can give thanks to God for that, can't you? But you see, Paul goes on to say, doesn't he? He helps us in all our troubles. So how do you process difficult times? Well, a couple of things just to think about uh, in our time together today. Firstly, to, to think about the reality of trouble. You know, it's one thing to praise God when things are, are going well uh, and life is peaceful. But you can also praise God when you're going through hard times, when you're going through challenges in life. Times when your heart cries out uh, for someone to walk alongside you. Times when you desperately need somebody to sit and, and pray with you. Someone to even hold your hand and, and cry with you. Or to come alongside and, and simply encourage you in some way or another. The reality is that we all have troubles, and we know this. But ask yourself, I mean, who wants trouble? Wouldn't we rather have a trouble-free existence, a trouble-free life? And yet Paul mentions carrying burdens that were so great and so heavy a burden that they had no control over these things, and which they felt were beyond the ability of their human endurance. Uh, they, they brought them to that point of almost believing that there was no hope, that they, were, that they were giving up all hope. So giving thankful praise reminds me that there is hope and there is help even in trouble. Paul says, but this happened. Why? So that we should rely not on ourselves, natural instinct, but only on God who raises the dead. Here is faith that flourished in hard soil. The only thing that Paul and his companions could do was trust God. Let me ask, have you ever been in a situation where you just know you've been carried through? Where you know you've been supported? When you have been helped? And that no matter what you've had to face, you've found a strength that is simply beyond you. The trouble you were going through was, was so deep and, and, and exhausting. 
the point that you felt as though you simply couldn't take any more. And yet it was only when you stopped relying on your own resources that you discovered how near God was and that God had drawn close to you and that God had helped you through. Because God the Father, says Paul, is the source of help or comfort. See here, God is called the Merciful Father. The Father of Compassion, as the New International Version says. The God from whom all help comes. Mercy or compassion is being concerned for and feeling for people in need. To be without mercy or compassion in your life is, is really to be indifferent to the need of others. It's to close our hearts off to the cry or pain of those around us or to people in the world. But God is the God of help and God is never indifferent to the suffering of the world or to the suffering of his people. He is the merciful, compassionate Father from whom all help comes and to whom we can always turn when trouble comes calling at our door. Jesus is the channel, if you like, of this help or comfort. God's the source, Jesus is the channel. The channel for this help and for this comfort is Jesus. It's really the cross of Calvary, isn't it, when you think about it. On, on the cross, Jesus bore the pain and the suffering of all our sin upon himself. And he did this so that it could be lifted off of us. And we share in his death and in all that his death has accomplished. The defeat of sin, the, the victory over death, the, the barrier between God and us being torn away. So that through our faith we receive the status of being called children of God, of being brought into the, the family of God and calling God our Father. And so we have this confidence of living each day, knowing that our life isn't determined by the decisions or by the actions of others, but by a purpose in Jesus that will never fail and will never falter. Yes, there are troubles, and troubles that come that at times we don't easily understand. There are times when we will ask, well, why does God or why did God allow this to, hap to happen to me or to others? But Jesus understands this. In John 14, you'll remember seeing the anxiety and distress his di disciples were obviously feeling. Um, Jesus said to them, wonderful, these wonderful words, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. What's Jesus doing? He's reminding them of the importance and power of faith, but faith in him. It's a reminder to us that life doesn't consist in what we have or, or what we achieve, but in the one in whom we believe. And so with God as the source of help and comfort, Jesus is the channel through which this comfort comes to us. He is the channel through which we receive this, this help of God. It is, Paul says, through Jesus that we share in God's great help. And later in his letter, Paul speaks of some of the troubles that he endured, um, particularly for his faith in Jesus as he sought to, to follow Jesus, to make Jesus known. He says he'd been imprisoned numerous times. Often he had been severely whipped, he'd been stoned, he was, he was near death on many occasions. He survived multiple shipwrecks, he faced danger from Jew and from Gentile, he faced danger in the cities, danger in the wilds, uh, danger in the high seas, danger from false friends. He had worked hard, often without sleep, without food, without shelter, without clothing. And, he says, every day I'm under the pressure of my concern for all the churches. And he says, when someone is weak, then I feel weak too. When someone is led into sin, I'm filled with distress. 
And, and what we find here is that Paul praises God for times even like those times. Why? Why would you do that? Because in all of this, Paul has discovered the grace of God in ever new unfolding ways. Let me give you an example. It was when he was in prison that Paul wrote many of his letters where he was encouraging and strengthening the church and the faith of others. He, he didn't have the time for or the inclination to do that at other times, but in prison he was able to do that. And Paul realises that by suffering as he did, he was also able to help and encourage others in their suffering because they could relate to and he could relate to them. Paul could say, I have the strength to face all conditions through the power that Christ gives me because he'd learned to rely upon that strength. He'd learned to rely on Christ. And even when I prayed for the Lord to take away my trouble, says Paul, his answer was simply this, my grace is all you need. Why? For my power is greatest when you are weak. So I know, Paul would say, that God can give you strength in your trials because he gave me strength in mine. He drew close in my troubles. And, and so Paul says here that the church is also a help or a comfort. He helps us in all our troubles so that we are able to help others who have all kinds of troubles using the same help that we ourselves have received from God, says Paul. Well, we see here that the church is a help and a comfort to itself in many ways. That might at first sound a bit selfish, but it, what it means is that we are to have the help and the compassion of the Father and of the Son, and by the Spirit we are to have that compassion and give that help to one another right so what we receive from God we are to give out when people are hurting the church is to be a, a healing community in the midst it's to be a healing community for itself first and foremost and then to others you know, a few years back when I went through uh, a particularly difficult time uh, with mental health um, it was a dark time and I wondered how if ever I could return to ministry and I was, I was, I found myself being encouraged during that time by the memory of having read uh, some words by uh, the Rev Reverend David Watson, who had been an Anglican, uh, an Anglican minister, who admitted that he had sometimes battled uh, with depression, and he'd gone through obviously difficult times with that. So that was an encouragement. But there was also the, the mental health nurse who had been working with me. Uh, who, who was asking me the question, well, having wrestled with this myself, could I better understand and encourage others uh, who wrestled with mental health? And obviously, the answer is yes. And there were others, of course, who prayed for me and who held me up before God in prayer. Listen to how Paul describes the way this works out in real life. He says, just as we have a share in Christ's many sufferings, so also, through Christ, we share in God's great help. If we suffer, it is for your help and salvation. If we are helped, then you too are helped and given the strength to endure with the patience the same sufferings, to endure with patience the same sufferings that we also endure. See, as we receive help, we are able then to help others. And it makes such a difference when we see other people, people around us, people who draw near to us, as, as being those sent by God to help, to comfort, to encourage, and to strengthen us, to pray for us and to pray with us in our times of trouble. Not just to see them as being nice people or kind people or helpful people, but to regard each act of mercy and help, every moment of kindness, every step walked with us, every prayer offered with us or for us, as being a part of God's overall care and compassion and help for us. And you know, the most amazing part of all this is that we get to share in this amazing and God-given ministry. That's what Paul's saying here. It was certainly through his troubles 
that Paul had experienced the grace of God in ever new and unfolding ways, as I say. He received strength, he was filled with hope, he grew in faith, and he gave thanks and praise to God. May we too give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the merciful Father from whom all help comes. He helps us in all our troubles so that we are able to help others who have all kind of troubles using the same help that we ourselves have received from him. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for the many ways and times that you have been a help and a comfort to us. Thank you for the church and for the people that you placed alongside us uh, to encourage us, to strengthen us, to establish our faith and hope for better days. We pray today for all the people who walk through difficulty and who need real hope and help today. All who need to know that you are their greatest and strongest help and comfort. 
draw near to them today we pray and renew their hearts father may we have eyes that are open and are looking to find those who need your help and our help simply to know that you never give up on them but are working in and through all things for good in jesus name we pray amen Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's been great being out here in the fresh air on this beautiful countryside. We'll be back again at our usual time next week. But now, throughout this week, may the joy of Christ shine in your eyes. May the compassion of Christ reach out through your hands. May the words of Christ fall from your tongues. And may the love of Christ flow from your heart. Amen. <laughs>